My name is Tony Campbell. And in 1989, I had a surprise. And here was the surprise. It was a supernatural experience that I was not looking for. Uh, what happened was, was it was four o'clock in the morning, 1989, in the month of December, and there was an angel. He was between 5'10 and 6 feet tall, very handsome man, looked like he was between 20s and 30s. He had dark hair. The next thing I knew, I was outside of my body. This angels took me and we sped up through the heavens. And I mean, I saw star systems. I, we passed by them so very, very quickly. And the next thing I knew, I was in heaven. And um, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter six, the prophet talks about this heavenly temple and inside of the temple, God Almighty is there. And in the book of Revelation, it talks about this heavenly temple. And uh, I saw this. I was outside of the temple. There was an angel standing in front of me. I looked up and I saw lightning. And instantly, I knew that I had an appointment with God. Because in the realm of heaven, or in the spiritual realm, you instantly know things. No one has to tell you. So the angel stood before me. Instantly, I knew I had an appointment with God and there was a door there that I saw. And instantly, I knew that it was closed. It was a door into the place where God the Father sits and the Lord Jesus also. And so the angel literally walked through the door and I knew I was supposed to follow the angel. And so I followed the angel through the door. And the first thing I see is this bright white light and this smoke or this cloud. Here was the person of God the Father. Did I see his face? No. Uh, I couldn't see anything because of the brightness of the light that emanated from his person and because of the smoke or the, the manifest glory of God. But then I had this sense that I should look to my left, which would have been the right of God the Father. And I, I probably should say this. The Apostle Paul said that God the Father is in a light that no man can see. And to be honest with you, uh, I wasn't thinking about that at the time, but I, I tested it and I never could see through the light or the cloud to see the facial features of God the Father. I did try but it never happened. So I can tell you what the apostle Paul said in the word of God is true. And I turned to my left, which would be to the father's right. And there was the person of Jesus Christ. And he is the most lovely person, the most beautiful person, the kindest person, the most gracious person that there ever is. Now, when I saw Jesus, I did not see him like like John did in the book of Revelation, where his hair was white as wool and his eyes were like fire and he had a white beard and a white robe and a golden sash and feet that seemed like that they were glowing. I did not see him in his glory. I saw what the Bible says is the mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, the God man Jesus. Make no mistake, he is God, as much as the Father is and as much as the Holy Spirit is. But I saw him in the form of a man. Jesus looked to be about six feet tall. He had the skin tone of a man living in the Middle East. He had chocolate brown, uh, sort of curly hair falling onto his shoulders. Uh, you know, his, his eyes, by the way, do change color. They can appear blue. They can appear green. They can appear brown. He had a chocolate mustache and beard. He had a white robe on, and there were also other witnesses there in the temple. But listen, 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 let me share this with you. The first thing that the father says, as he says to me, he says, take notes and learn. And so I was there to learn of the father and I was there to learn of Jesus. And so heaven is a place of learning. If I could say this to you, when you go to heaven, you have no cares. All the weight that you feel right down here on the earth, all of the concerns, all of the cares, all of the worries, uh, all the pressures that are related to life here upon the earth,
The minute that you escape your body and you live in Jesus Christ by virtue of faith and obedience and a relationship with God through Jesus, all of those cares disappear. You are completely weightless. And if I can say this to you, just to give you some knowledge and some information, all of your, um, let's say this, your physical flaws disappear. So if you had any sickness, once you're in heaven, that sickness is gone. If you had any problems with your eyes, it's gone. If you had any problems with your ears, it's gone. You have a spirit body that looks absolutely perfect. You look so good and you feel so good. And there's such peace there. I'm giving you this truth and this revelation. And you feel the love of the Father and you feel the joy of the Lord. In fact, there's a song called, uh, I Can Only Imagine. And I don't have to imagine because when I, when I landed in heaven, if I could share this uh, heavenly experience with you, it was like I was on the ground and this joy exploded from within me. It was so indescribable. It was so um, um, overwhelming that I couldn't say praise the Lord. I couldn't say hallelujah. I couldn't say thank you, Jesus. I was literally speechless. I was overcome. The apostle Peter in one of his letters said, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that's true. It is indescribable joy. And what I want to say to you is there's uh, incredible love, and that, matter of fact, I'll share this with you. In the book of Ephesians chapter three, it talks about that you can, that you can know the love of Christ, which passes intellectual knowledge, and that you can be filled with all the fullness of God. In, in chapter three of the book of Ephesians that Paul wrote, and in the Greek, it means you're so full of God that you vibrate. Well, I remember being so full of God in heaven that I literally vibrated in total, complete ecstasy. The love of the Father brought me to tears. The joy of Jesus was beyond anything I had ever experienced before. And this is what awaits you. You know, Jesus talked about those who serve him and serve the Father. And he said in one of his teachings, enter into the joy of the Lord. Listen, um, <laughs> this is the Father's joy. This is the joy of Jesus. Now you will experience some of this here upon the earth, but the intensity of it when you go into glory is beyond anything that you have ever thought. And let me share some other truth with you. Everything in heaven is alive. The trees are alive. The flowers are alive. The atmosphere is alive. There's a river of life. I, I witnessed this. Uh, um, I, I saw uh, a pure white light in the form of a man. It was a person of God the Father. I did not see any features because of the brightness of the light. But there was a glory that was pulled back where I saw a little bit of the right side of his body, his arm and his leg. And there was something that was like water that came out of his being uh, into the throne. It collected under the throne. It came out from the throne. It came through the heavenly temple. It came out of the heavenly temple and it went throughout heaven, the middle of the city. And it was the river of life. And I, I, I wanted to know, what am I seeing? And a scripture came to me from the book of Jeremiah chapter two. And what it revealed was, is that the father was the God or the fountain of living waters. And so it's the water of life. And so uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful river of life. In fact, it's the spirit of the father. It's the spirit of Jesus is the Holy Spirit that comes out of heaven into the earth. The Bible says, ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit is referred to as rain. It talks about an outpouring of the spirit and it's just like rain. And Jesus referred to it in John's gospel. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What comes out of heaven, 
when you believe in Jesus and you serve Jesus and you love Jesus, it fills your spirit and it comes out in prayer and in intercession and in praise and worship to the Father. And you're going to love the music of heaven because it just seems to just feel everything and everybody. And I remember the flowers that seemed as if they're intelligent and they're praising the Father, they're praising Jesus. And I saw musical notes that dance through the air and go into the Father and the saints of God and the the disciples of Jesus, all believers in Jesus and the sons and daughters of the Father gather around the throne and and uh, they're on their knees and everybody uh, has their hands lifted and they bow down their heads to what we'll call ground in worship of the Father. And then this light, light comes out of each son and daughter of the Father, collects over them like a, the best way for me to describe it is almost like a smoke and a cloud. And then the Father inhales and he inhales the love and the devotion and the, uh, the allegiance and the loyalty and the faith and the worship of each son and daughter and the angels as well. And the father inhales and enjoys the love of every son and daughter. And then out of the father comes a burst of light and life and love. And so there's a circle of love because heaven is all about love, peace, joy. And so there is this positional righteousness that you have in Jesus. Jesus is your righteousness. But there is also, when you keep the commandments of God, there is a relational righteousness that comes through obedience. James, the half-brother of Jesus, said in, in uh, chapter 1, around verse 22, he says, be doers of the word. Okay, and the, cre and the word doers is, a, is the word poetics. It's a Greek word that means to find creative ways to put the teachings of Jesus into practice. And this is what pleases the Father. And so there is this relational righteousness that gives you an intimacy with the Father and Jesus like you can never, ever have without it. And so I want to urge you to go beyond justification by faith. Romans 5 and 1, where Apostle Paul says, therefore being justified by faith, you have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you stand before God because of the blood of Jesus, just as if you've never sinned, justified by faith. But I want to urge you to uh, walk in the love of God and to keep his commandments. Jesus said, those who do the commandments and teach them shall be considered great. And so uh, the apostle John said, by this we know that we know him when we keep his commandments. And if I can remind you um, that in the uh, book of Genesis, the scripture says, the Lord God commanded the man. And in the book of uh, Joshua chapter one, God speaks to Joshua, says, have I not commanded you? And then in the book of Revelation, it says, here are they to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, w one evidence that you have the faith of Jesus is you keep the commandments of God. And then it says, here are they to keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so this is relational righteousness because the Bible says the righteous Lord, he loves righteousness. And the Bible says that we're looking for a new heavens and a new earth where lives righteousness. And Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, 25, in that part of the Bible, he talks about the righteous will shine in the kingdom of the Father. And so I want to urge you to love God. I want to urge you to love people because in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, it says the two great commandments are to love God and to love people. And in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40, Jesus said the great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said in the book of John, in this way, uh, you will show that you love the Father. In the very same way I've loved you, love one another. And so this is relational righteousness. And so I want to share with you that if you love the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and you love people, you're walking in relational righteousness and you're becoming like Jesus. You listen, you're practicing for heaven, for heaven. Listen, have fun, rejoice in the Lord and rejoice always because heaven is a place that is fun.
It's a place of pure joy. And so I want to tell you right now, you need to practice here on earth. Enjoy the Father, enjoy Jesus, and get ready for heaven. The Father and Jesus made heaven for you, and it is your inheritance. And the Father is looking for you, and, and he is in, he's going to really enjoy. Jesus is going to really enjoy when you and Jesus, you and the Father meet face to face in heaven and in glory. Let me share one more thing with you that I saw in heaven. I saw at one point that Jesus was weeping. He was crying. And this is what Jesus said. And this is what he said to me. He said, many people want what I have. But he was crying and this is what he said. But they don't want me. Sometimes we're looking for the blessings of the Father. Sometimes we're looking for and we're praying for the blessings of Jesus. But the Father wants to be loved. The Father wants to be honored. The Father wants to have your commitment, your devotion, your dedication. Jesus wants to have your consecration. Jesus wants you to be righteous like he is righteous and holy like he is holy. And more than taking from Jesus, take of Jesus himself. More than taking from the Father, take the Father himself. Because when you take of Jesus and the primary focus of your life is the person of Jesus, you bring gladness and joy to the heart of Jesus. And when your focus of your life is loving, pleasing the Father, you bring joy and gladness to the heart of the Father. This is what I want to say to you. Let Jesus be the theme of your life and the theme of your ministry. Let me share this with you. You can go to Tony Kemp Ministries. You can go on Tony Kemp Ministries into the School of the Supernatural. And what we want to do is we want to teach you how to know the Father and how to know Jesus and how to know the Holy Spirit more than ever before. And not only that, but how to if fulfill Ephesians 4 and 11, where it says God gives apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ, and to bring people to the height, the fullness, and maturity in Jesus. Also to make disciples, and also to preach Jesus so people can be saved from their sins, delivered from the evil one, filled with the Holy Spirit, healed of sicknesses and diseases. We want to equip you so that you can go and preach the word, just like Jesus first disciples did, and God will confirm his word with signs following, and you can please the Father. You can be a part of the great harvest, bringing a harvest of souls to Jesus, making a harvest of disciples that please the Father who follow Jesus. May the Lord bless you. The school of the supernatural, it's for you to be equipped to walk in the ways of Jesus, the wisdom of Jesus, and do the works of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you richly.